Welcome to a brand new podcast episode of the series, Timmy Talks, Favorite Duelist Articles. In this series, I'm going to read to you the articles that I like best from the legendary Duelist magazines. And today I've got an article for you about banding. It's called To Build a Better Band, and it's written by Beth Morsand. To Build a Better Band, written by Beth Morsand. My friend attacked with the Mesa Pegasus and a Bokrath bandit. Since a Rath can't fly, that means the band can't fly, and I can block them with a zombie, right? I attack with a Benelish hero and a grizzly bear banded together. What color is the damage? My opponent is attacking with a vampire. Can I ban my Pegasus with my sea serpent to block it and assign all the damage to the serpent? What good is banding anyway? As these questions suggest, banding may be the most confusing of the common creature abilities in Magic. For a player who understands his subtleties, however, it can be extremely powerful. Used properly, banding will let your creatures wreak havoc among your opponent's forces and make your defenses super strong. This article attempts to clear up some of the confusions about banding and offers a few tips on how to use banding effectively. Many people explain banding by dividing it into attacking banding and defensive banding, and then try to describe the differences between the two. I find it much more intuitive to divide it instead into two separate abilities, which I'll call mutual assistance and damage sharing. Mutual assistance only applies to attacking creatures. Damage sharing works for both attackers and defenders. The mutual assistance part of banding is an agreement between two or more creatures that if one is stopped, the other or others will stop as well and gang up on the blocker. A Benelish hero may be small by herself, but with enough of them banded together, even the biggest crawl worm in the forest will think twice about getting in their way. Notice that defending creatures have mutual assistance automatically. Any number of defenders may join in blocking a single attacker, whether or not they have the ability to band. If you want to use mutual assistance, you must declare which creatures are banding together when you tap the attackers. Any creature that has the ability to band may sign an assistant pact with one other creature, forming a group of two, or may add itself to a group that has already been formed to make a larger group. No attacking group can ever have more than one creature without the band's ability. The band's with other ability in the Legends expansion is a limited form of the band's ability. A creature with bands with other X can only join another creature with bands with other X, or a group where all of the members have that ability. A creature with the regular bands ability may join itself to a bands with others group just as it would with a normal banded group. Once you have declared your attack, you may not form new groups or add members to an existing group. If something gives the band's ability to a creature that didn't have it at the start of the attack, it's too late to do any good. If one of the members of the group is killed by a spell before engaging with the enemy, the rest of the group continues on. You can't add it a different creature to the group to replace the slain comrade. The one exception to this rule is that if something removes the bands with other X ability from a creature in a group after an attack has been declared, but before blocking it, the attacker can and must rearrange the creatures so that all attacking groups are still legal. The attacker may use effects to give the banding ability to that creature or to another creature before rearranging. If the ability is removed after blocking is declared, the attacker must still rearrange creatures but may not change any of the blocking. This will almost always result in one defending creature blocking two attacking creatures that aren't a band, or several attacking creatures in a band plus one that's not. See the section that follows on damage sharing to find out how to deal with that. Being part of a group does not change the abilities of any of the creatures in that group. Each creature retains all of his own abilities, and no creature gains another creature's ability. If a hero and a pegasus band together, the hero cannot fly, but the pegasus is not forced to walk either. No, the hero cannot ride on the pegasus. The Dominion Creatures Union contracts strictly forbids it. If a timberwolf attacks in a band with a war mammoth, 
The wolf does not gain the trample ability, and the mammoth does not lose the trample ability. Next, your opponent declares defenders. This is done just as if the creatures were not banded. Each defending creature can block only one attacker. Creatures with landwalk abilities cannot be blocked if the defender has the appropriate type of land to play. Flyers can only be blocked by other flyers. Invisible creatures can only be blocked by walls, and so on. Creatures who have agreed to assist each other, however, will stop and fight if one of their comrades is blocked. This is treated just as if the blocker had blocked all of the creatures in a group simultaneously and can result in a creature blocking something that it would normally not be allowed to block. For example, a hero and Pegasus attack as a band, a grizzly bear cannot block the Pegasus since the bear can't fly, but the bear can block the hero and the Pegasus must then fly down and help fight the bear, just as if the bear had been able to block both of them. However, for a contrasting example, Consider the case of the Bawkrath and the Pegasus attacking as a band. Assuming the defender has a swamp and a zombie. The Wrath is unblockable because it has swamp walk. The zombie can't fly, so it cannot block the Pegasus. Since the zombie cannot block either of the attacking creatures, all it can do is stand there and make ugly faces as the Pegasus flies overhead and the Wrath slings past. If the defender also had a Hypnotic Spectre, the Spectre could block the Pegasus, and the Bokraf would be forced to stop as well and help fight the Spectre. The zombie still could not join in this fight. Notice that the band's ability has no effect whatsoever when determining which defending creature can block an attacking creature. Even if the zombie had the band's ability, it still could not join the flying scepter to block the Pegasus. There is no such thing as banding to block. Mutual assistance only applies when declaring attackers. But wait, you cry. The rules say that banding works for both attackers and defenders. This is true and leads us to the second half of the band's ability, which I call damage sharing. Damage sharing only works during the damage assignment part of an attack, and its rules are the same for both attackers and defenders. If two or more creatures on the same side end up fighting the same creature, their opponent normally assigns the damage done to them, and can arrange it so to kill the maximum number of creatures or the most dangerous one. If one or more of these creatures has the band's ability, however, then their controller gets to assign the damage instead and can put all the damage on the least valuable creature or onto a creature tough enough not to be hurt by it. The bands with other X ability from Legends expansion works similarly but is less powerful. You need two creatures with the same bands with other X ability in a group, not just one in order to share the damage between creatures in the group. As long as you have two or more of such creatures, you can spread damage around all member members of the group, not just the ones of type X. Notice that for damage sharing, it makes no difference how many creatures are fighting together, as long as at least one of them has the band's ability. That creature's controller gets to distribute the damage among the whole group. It also makes no difference which creature has the band's ability. All the creatures fighting together are treated equally. The exception to this rule is the special case mentioned above, where your opponent removes the banding or bands with other X ability from one of your creatures after blocking has been declared. After you make the required rearrangements, you will probably be left with a defender blocking two of your attacking creatures that aren't a band, or several attacking creatures in a band plus one that's not in a band, or even two bands that can't band with each other. In these cases, your opponent totals up the damage the defending creature will do and divides it among your blocked creatures. Then you may redistribute the part of the damage assigned to any banded group among the members of that group. You may not move damage to or from a creature that's not a member of the group, even if they were both blocked and damaged by the same creature. Damage sharing works only on damage from creatures blocking each other. If I throw a lightning bolt at one of the heroes in an attacking band, the hero's controller cannot shunt the damage from the bolt onto a different creature. Finally, note that banded creatures still deal their damage as individuals. Each creature is a separate source of damage. Some damage may be white, some green, some may be trample damage, some may force the player to discard cards. The fact that they are banded has no effect on the damage that they do. 
if four Benelish heroes attack as a band and you don't block them, it will take four uses of your circle of protection to stop them. If a Pegasus and a War Mammoth attack as a band, the Pegasus does one point of normal damage and then the Mammoth does three points of trample damage. Trample damage is always assigned last. Now that we've discussed exactly how banding works, let's look at a few of the strategies for using banding effectively. The most common use of banding on the attacking side is to trade your small creatures for your opponent's largest one. For example, you have two heroes, a Pegasus and a Unicorn, and your opponent has a 4-4 Sangir Vampire. If you didn't have the ability to ban, then you couldn't dare attack, since the Vampire would block one of the smaller creatures each turn and get stronger and stronger. You do only a few points of damage before all of your creatures were gone. With banding, however, you can form all of your creatures into a group and send them at your opponent. If the vampire dares to block, the four little creatures will kill it and you can assign all of the vampire's damage to one and keep the other three to continue to attack the next turn. If you have larger creatures, you may even be able to avoid losing a creature at all. Say you have a Benelish hero with a holy strength, making it a 2-3 and a pearl unicorn. If they are banded, they can kill a blocking 3-3 creature, assign two points of damage to the heroes and one point to the unicorn and walk away smiling. When defending, banding is even more useful. You can block with the same sort of groups as you would for attacking and trade one small creature for one large one. Or if you have a large wall, you can include it in the blockers and not lose a creature at all. For example, your opponent is attacking with two crawl worms, six fours. If you have a pair of script sprites, a unicorn and a wall of ice, you can block only one of the worms with the wall, but you'll have to either let the other worm through, lose one of your creatures each turn blocking it, or block with all the creatures and lose all four of them in exchange for killing the worm. If you want to do any attacking yourself, you'll either take a lot of damage or soon run out of creatures. Change one of the sprites into a Pegasus, however, and the situation is very different. On the first attack, you can block one of the worms with all five of your creatures, letting the other one through. The Pegasus's banding ability lets you assign all the damage to your wall, while your creatures do four points of damage to the worm, killing it. If the other worm continues to attack, you can do the same next turn. To make damage sharing even more effective, cast a regeneration spell on your banding creature. As long as you have mana to regenerate with, the creature can serve as a damage sink. Your opponent may not attack since you can kill a large creature and take no losses. Watch out for an attack by a swarm of creatures though. If you block one of them with enough to kill it, you won't have enough blockers to stop the others from hurting you. A regenerating bander also makes a nice offense. It's not as powerful attacking as it would be defending since you can only band one other creature unless you have more than one bander but it gives you the flexibility to attack as a band when your opponent has something medium sized to block with, and as individual when she doesn't. A smaller bander won't help in getting past a large blocker, however. Of course, any creature with both banding and regeneration is a prime target for terror, short supply shares, or disintegrate, precisely because it is so useful. So if you think your opponent has spells that can get rid of a regenerating creature, you may want to have the regeneration on a different creature than the banding creature, to avoid putting all of your eggs in one basket. The ultimate in banding flexibility is the Helm of Chatsuk, an artifact that lets you give any creature the band's ability for a turn at a time. Using the Helm can put your banding exactly where it will do the most good, arranging your creatures to outmatch your opponents or to do the most damage for the least loss. The worst enemies of a banding strategy are trampling creatures. Your four Benelish heroes line up to block an attacking Crawl Worm and suddenly your opponent casts a Berserk on it. Now you've got problems. You still get to distribute the damage from the Worm, however you wish, but any damage above the toughness of the creatures it's assigned to will trample onto you. If you put all 12 points on the hero, even a hero with regeneration, then you'll take 11 points of damage. The only sure defense against a trampling creature is a ward of the appropriate color. The legendary land Telaria can remove bands or bands with others from a creature but only during the upkeep, so it can't spoil things for you in the middle of an attack. The Shelkin Brownie on the other hand doesn't affect normal banding, 
but can remove the bands with other ability from a creature at any time, even after you declare an attack using the ability. Be very careful about using bands with other when your opponent has a brownie, since a brownie can draw a creature away from the group, leaving it easy pickings for other more powerful creatures. There are many other spells and combinations that work well with banding, which I'll leave you to discover. If you use this creature ability carefully, your opponent should be in for some nasty surprises. Okay, and this was the article about banding. Wow, so interesting to read this again, to build a better band by Baf Mersant. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about banding. And uh, you know what, I'll try to answer them. I'm not a judge, <laughs> but um, I'll give it a go. Let me also know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this article and if you'd like to hear more articles right here on Timmy Talks on the Podcast Duelist series. For now, thank you very much for listening and let's take a look at the end scroll. Ik het als fikker te somba kazee.